Well, today in the two car garage, we're talking custom gauges for a custom bug. Hey, welcome back to the two car garage. I'm Lucas, and well, we're sitting in Kurt's bug here. And uh, well, today I figured it'd be a good time to uh, kind of walk you through the uh, custom gauges we got going on here. Now, at this point, I have all the electrical. Uh, basically mocked up and taken care of. The gauges have been mounted. Uh, that needed to be done so I could make sure everything would work together. And now that they're all functioning as they should, I figured, well, we might as well talk about what's going on. So I think first things first, I'm going to bring you up close, kind of show you uh, show you an up close and personal view of these gauges. And then, uh, you know, we'll turn some lights on and show you how, how all that works. And then, uh, well, then we'll look at some old footage of, well, everything it took to get to this point. Um, it's not going to be a step-by-step -step showing you everything that was done, but you know, basically a rough overview of all the work it took to, to make these custom gauges. So, uh, well, let's take a look, shall we? All right, well, here's the close-up view. And uh, you can see I've got the steering wheel removed just so we can kind of see what's going on here. But here's, uh, here's our setup. You can see the gauges are all uh, white face gauge now which I think is going to look really good against the blue that we're going to be painting this car. But just to kind of give you a, a, you know, an idea of what's going on here, this is the original speedometer out of this car. You know, you can see it's a little worse for wear. We needed to do something anyway. And in talking to Kurt um, and uh, expressing my own desires, I thought it would look really nice if we uh, changed this to a white face gauge. And we also added a few few little tricks here. So this speedometer, the original 1965 speedometer, you know, you can see it goes up to 90 miles an hour and is as basic as it gets. There's a couple of lights down below. You've got one double arrow light that's for the hazards and the directionals. So you only have one light that flashes. And then you've got an oil pressure light and a generator light. And then up in the middle, you've got your high beam, low beam. So really a pretty pretty basic setup. What we've done is I went ahead and acquired a late model speedometer. Uh, this is like a 70s Super Beetle type speedometer and went ahead and re reimagined this to work for this car. So now um, if I go ahead and turn the key on here you can see the left directional actually blinks over here and if I move over to the right it's blinking over here. So these were just some other warning lights that I've repurposed to use for the directionals. Down in the lower corner, it's probably a little hard to see with the steering column in the way, but we still have the generator and the oil light. Um, I went ahead and actually marked those now so we know which is which. And then the double arrow is now for the hazard. So if I turn the hazards on, you can see now that the the double arrow is actually flashing red, and then you also have the the two directional indicators flashing. So that's that's what's going on with uh, with all the lights here. Now, if I turn the headlights on, you can see that the uh, the high beam indicator here is you know glowing blue, just like the original would have. If I turn that off, I go down the low beams, then then we've got that off. Now before we get into how I actually got this gauge to, to look the way it looks, we might as well look at the, uh, the other gauges here. Starting with the uh, air pressure gauges here. Now this is for the air ride. And when these arrived, uh, they were just a standard you know, dual needle air pressure gauge. The face was really basic, uh, pretty much like any modern gauge you would get. In reality, that probably would have been fine, but it just I don't like the inconsistency across the board. So this is what prompted me to, to go ahead and reface all of the gauges. Now, if you look up close, you can actually see that the, uh, the style and the numbering and all of that is the same as the speedometer. And that is all based on the, the original 65 style speedometer. So with the decision made to reface these gauges uh, to match the speedometer, the last thing I wanted to do for consistency's sake was to change up the fuel gauge. 
Now the original 1965 Beetle fuel gauge is just a square gauge, pretty standard on all of them. Now what I've done is I went ahead and pulled out of my stockpile a, uh, a fuel gauge out of a Carmen Ghia. So we've got a round gauge, it's the same size as the air pressure gauges. And with that in place, it really, it really completes the look here. Now if you can imagine with the dash being painted and everything looking real pretty, uh, this is really going to look it's going to look pretty nice. Now everything's been uh, outfitted with LED bulbs. So if I turn the lights on here, you can see that everything really lights up pretty nicely. So having an LED bulb in all of these uh, really brightens things up and for sure at night you're not going to have any problem seeing uh, what's going on. Alright, so now that you've seen them up close, well let's talk about how we did it. So first things first, I started with the speedometers and I simply took the late model speedometer apart, took the needle and the face off, and then I just scanned that into the computer so I had an image that I could mimic. Then I took another uh, early style speedometer that I had, took that apart and did the same thing, scanned the face into the computer so I had something to, to mimic. And then just simply using Inkscape, which is a an image vector program, I went ahead and, and copied everything. So I just made a vector image of the line style that's going on in this gauge, um, uh, the number style, I mimicked all the numbers, and then I simply took those and applied them to the late model style gauge. So I just transferred all that stuff over, made sure that all my number spacing and line spacing was correct. I included the logos for the generator and for the oil pressure light and really just kind of made sure everything was early style that fit the late style. So once I had that done, um, things were looking pretty good. I was pretty satisfied at that point with uh, how things were laid out. Uh, then I went ahead and took the uh, air pressure gauges apart and the fuel gauge and did the same thing. I just scanned those into the computer, transferred them over to Inkscape, and then using all the work that I had already done with the fuel gauge, just scaled everything down and then laid all the numbers into the correct position so the needles will still line up. And then we ended up with our fuel gauge and our air pressure gauges. Now once I had my gauges laid out in Inkscape and I was real happy with how everything was going to work, you know, we did print a couple of test copies. You can see here I've got some, some paper copies that we printed just to just to make sure everything was going to lay out correctly and, and fit where we want it. And then from there it was time to get them printed. Now, I did attempt to print these myself. Um, you know, I tried it on just some white vinyl that I had and also some, some silver vinyl that I had. And well, honestly, my printer just isn't, just isn't very good. So what I ended up doing is I just contacted my local sign shop. Um, they do this stuff all the time. And, had them print it up for me. So the vinyl that we went with, and I've got an extra copy here. Uh, this is actually just an outdoor grade vinyl, so I know that it's going to be plenty sticky. We're not going to have to worry about things peeling off in the future. And uh, well, really, as crisp as this is, there's, there's no way I could have done it with my equipment. Um, it wasn't cheap, uh, but it was well worth it in the end. Now, like I said, when I had them print these, I had them print uh, I think I got four copies of each gauge. Um, well, honestly, that was for me because I knew that I was probably going to screw it up in the process of doing this. And, well, I actually did. I had to redo the, uh, you can see here's one for the speedometer. And then uh, these are all attempts that I made for the smaller gauges. And uh, there's a bit of a learning curve there, uh, just making sure you got everything stuck down right. We did end up using some uh, some soapy water to help position it. Same thing you would do if you're putting vinyl uh, graphics on the outside of a vehicle. The air pressure gauges and the fuel gauge here, those were pretty straightforward. I basically just uh, laid the laid the graphic right on there. The speedometer, there was actually a little bit more work involved there. The late style speedometer actually had a, a whole bunch of holes in it for different indicator lights. And I only needed the two side ones for the directionals, so the remaining two that were right below them, 
I didn't want those to still be in the in the panel. I didn't want those to possibly be showing through the sticker if I just you know put the sticker over top of it. So what I did is I went ahead and just soldered the holes shut. So I took a small piece of brass, uh, cleared away the paint, put the brass behind the hole, and just soldered it shut. So it's just a soft solder. Once I had that filled in, I just simply came in and a little bit of scraping, filing, and some sanding. Got it smoothed out to the point where once it was uh, painted and the vinyl applied, you'd never know there was a hole there. Now, before we assembled the gauges, I went ahead and painted the inside of the speedometer bright white. Uh, the back side of the face is painted white, uh, as well as the inside of the fuel gauge and the back side of, of this face. I didn't need to do that to the air pressure gauges as they are already uh, white plastic housings and the back side of the face was already white. I chose white paint uh, because it's highly reflective and I wanted to make sure that these gauges are going to be plenty visible at night. So with the gauges faced here, uh, the way we want them, everything's looking real good. We've got the housings all painted white. The next thing I needed to address was actually the center of the speedometer. Now the late model gauge has a big half moon cutout in it because that's where the fuel gauge was in the, in the later Beetles. So if we look at an original speedometer, the original 65 style speedometer, you can see it's not flat. It's got a ridge here, that's where they've got the markings for the, the mile per hour. And then inset into that was this little, this little chrome beauty ring just to, just to kind of dress things up. I really like the way that looks and I didn't want to have just a flat face gauge and then try to figure out what to do with that big hole. So what I did is I took a chunk of aluminum, I machined it to mimic what was going on inside of this gauge with the, with the raised lump and then I also put my high beam indicator in there. To make the high beam indicator function I just simply took the fuel gauge apart, uh, put a light bulb in there with everything painted white the light is able to reflect out to this original blue lens. So that took care of my high beam indicator and then it also took care of dressing up the the center of the gauge. After we got everything laid out and everything mounted up I needed to cut the slot for the odometer. It doesn't match exactly because the late style odometer is a little bit, little bit wider than the original one but all in all I think it turned out okay. To cut that out, I just simply painted the back side of it with some Sharpie, laid it on the speedometer face in the proper orientation, marked where all the little cutouts were, and then uh, using a small saw and a jeweler's vise or jeweler's stand, I just simply cut the, cut the shape out, a lot of filing, a lot of sanding later, and we, we got where we are. So the edge is just polished aluminum. I uh, painted the center of that white and then just went ahead and clear coated everything so it's going to be a nice long lasting uh, beauty panel here. Once we got that taken care of I did test and lubricate the, the speedometer mechanism. Same thing with the fuel gauge. I double checked to make sure that was functioning and lubricated. And then it was just time to get everything put back together. So in order for me to put the gauges all back together uh, first thing I wanted to do was um, I located a different trim ring for the fuel gauge. While it doesn't match exactly uh, the air pressure gauges, it's much closer than it was to the, the original Gia style uh, bezel. I wanted something that, again, is more consistent. What I did to locate this bezel is I just simply bought another gauge. This is uh, it's just a, the cheapest gauge I could find on Amazon. Uh, knowing I wasn't going to use the gauge, I really just wanted to find a bezel that matched the other two. And realistically, it looks pretty good. So we went ahead and peeled this bezel off of the other gauge and uh, polished it up, made it look pretty. And then uh, I had to make a couple of tools in order to help me set these in place. So for the small gauges, I just have a chunk of aluminum that I machined to fit the bezel. I laid in some blue masking tape just to help prevent scratching this stuff. And then you just drop the gauge in and then I was able to fold the edges back around. For the speedometer, I just did the same thing. Only uh, instead of cutting it out of a big chunk of aluminum, I just used a, a ABS end cap uh, from my plumbing section at the hardware store. 
And again, machined a, a recess in that so the speedometer ring will fit down in there. And then once you drop the speedometer on there, it's just a matter of folding the edge back around uh, so it encases everything. And that took care of that. Took care of that. So once we got the gauges all put together, it really uh, was time to figure out how to mount them in the car. Now the speedometer, that just mounts up as normal, so there's nothing new there. But um, for the air pressure gauges and for the fuel gauge, I didn't want to just have some plain Jane panels that you can, you can buy anywhere. So I actually located these grills uh, from Grumpy's Metal. Uh, and the fit and finish on these is, is really pretty good. Now you can buy these panels in a bunch of different arrangements, but he had exactly what I was looking for. So we've got the two small hole gauges here and then a single small hole gauge here. The beauty of these panels is it's not just me drilling holes into the original screens. They're actually designed for these gauges. So it really, in the end, is going to look, well, like it belongs there. Pretty much stock, but not stock. It's really just adding to the classic look of this car. Everything looks like it was built that way from the factory, but with some custom touches. So once the gauges were all put together, we figured out how things were going to get mounted. The last step really was just making sure everything was wired properly. Now the little gauges were no big deal. All they have is a light bulb in them, so those are just wired up like standard lights. But the speedometer took some, well, some creative electrical work. The two directionals, uh, those are easy. Those are grounded through the housing, so you bring a power wire in, that lights those up. For the three lights on the bottom, uh, I needed to isolate the hazard light from the other two uh, because of a grounding issue. What I found for that is I just simply got a, uh, it's a VDO bulb mount from a late model. I found it on eBay, actually. I'll, I'll throw a link to it if it still exists. Um, but because it has a plastic housing and it has two pins, uh, I can have a separate power and ground for that. And that way my generator and my oil light could be wired up uh, with the power coming in because they get grounded from the other side. So again, I had to change things up just a little bit in order to work with, uh, with this design I was going with. But in the end, uh, you gotta admit, it looks pretty cool. Now normally when you install the speedometer in a vintage bug, you've got your wiring harness comes up behind it and there's a whole bunch of individual plugs that needed to, need to be plugged in. I didn't wanna have to be trying to plug things in the back of the gauge uh, once it was in place because it's a little hard to get to and now there's a lot more wires. So what I did is I simply wired it up with individual plugs. So I've got three different plugs for the lights in the gauge. I've got one plug controls the directionals and the uh, illumination. The other one controls the three bottom gauges. Um, there is a ground included as well, so I'm not just grounding to the chassis, but I'll have a separate ground for that. And then the third plug is actually for my high beam, low beam indicator. The nice thing about that is the plugs all come out in the same area. I've got matching plugs in my wiring harness, so I can just simply install my speedometer and just plug the three plugs in. And they're color coded, so you can't get them wrong. If the speedometer ever has to come out in the future, uh, we don't have to worry about trying to label each individual wire and figuring out where everything goes later. It's simply going to be a plug and play operation. You really can't get it wrong. So that's, uh, that's it. That's the Cliff Notes version of what's going on here. You know, this car has got a lot of, a lot of custom elements going on here. And uh, we really want everything to, again, look like it belongs there. Like that's, that's how it came from the factory. You know, these little, these little custom touches, while they take some time to do, um, I think they're just going to add to a much more cohesive package here. So when everything's all painted up here and we've got, you know, fresh paint on the dash, everything's clean and pretty, I think it's going to look, I think it's going to look pretty trick. So there you have it. Custom gauges for Kurt's custom bug. You know, all in all, uh, there was some work involved here. You know, there's hours of of work here trying to figure things out and then also just make sure everything functions and looks proper but in the end I I'm real happy with how it turned out uh, Kurt has uh, has actually seen this and he's he seems pretty stoked and uh, you know at this point 
we're done with this. This stuff can all get torn out. We'll move on to the next step. But that's for a different day. So thanks for hanging out and watching what we got going on here, especially if you made it all the way to the end. So for now, I'm going to let you go. And uh, really, until the next one, I'll see you around.